Entrepreneurially Thinking is a presentation of BioSTL and CET, Center for Emerging Technologies, with Rare Gem Productions, changing the way you view new ventures, including you on the pathway to success with your business in the St. Louis marketplace and beyond. Here's your hosts, Cheryl and Christy. Now let's get thinking entrepreneurially. Welcome to the Entrepreneurially Thinking Podcast. Our goal is to energize your entrepreneurial mindset and create pathways for business success in the St. Louis region and beyond. I'm Christy Maxfield, Director of Entrepreneur Development Services at the Center for Emerging Technologies. And I'm Cheryl Watkins Moore, Director of Bioscience and Entrepreneurial Inclusion Initiative for BioSTL. Hey, Christy. Howdy. We are back again. Oh, yes. And as you all know, this podcast is about stepping out of your comfort zone. So. Which we do all the time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, yes. And we encourage you to carve out this time to think about your opportunities and business goals in new ways. We want to peel back the limitations you might be putting on yourself about how you think about small business, working for yourself, or being entrepreneurial right where you are. So you can connect with and stay connected with the Entrepreneurially Thinking community on all of our favorite streaming platforms, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, or visit our website at entrepreneurallythinking.com or follow the hashtag EthinkSTL. Well, if you look under the hood of startup action in the information technology space, what you find is IoT, which is Internet of Things. Blockchain, think Bitcoin, artificial intelligence, deep learning, augmented reality, and virtual reality. Among others. But yes. those are just a sampling Yes, of things that get lumped into that nice IT yes. category. That bucket. Bucket. This is where the action is, and the innovation across dozens of industries exists. You may also be surprised to learn that St. Louis is home to the new VRAR Association, a global industry association for virtual reality, augmented reality, and mixed reality. I like the mixed reality. I do too. I'm like, I want to know. I think that's going to be really cool, right? Connecting leading solution providers with brands and customers. Today, I think we have a really a, a unique guest, exciting guest, Nathan Pettyjohn, who's CEO of IO411 and founder of the VRAR Association. Homegrown here in St. Louis. Thank yes. you very much. Yes, yes, yes. And he's joining us today to explore the innovation and entrepreneurship at the heart of VRAR. Not only is it entertaining, I know everybody over Christmas, you saw the black boxes over everybody's eyes on these commercials with the whole virtual reality mm-hmm. and Samsung. Yep. Not only is it entertaining, it's also radically changing a lot of different industries, including education, medicine, commerce, whole, whole lot more. We'll be right back to get that conversation started and um, don't get sucked into virtual reality while we're gone. <laughs> <laughs> Now here's Make It Happen with Keith Sales Pro. How do highly successful people think? According to author Tom Black, a boxcar millionaire, here are five beliefs. Successful people believe that people are as happy as they want to be. Successful people always are persistent, even in the face of disappointment. Successful people believe you must constantly improve your knowledge and skills. Successful people believe big, even when dealing with small-minded people. And finally, successful people believe you must be truly committed to being of service to others. Today, remember, it can happen. It will happen. And together, we will make it happen. Follow Keith Sales Pro on Facebook or Twitter at Keith Sales Pro. Or visit his website at KeithSalesPro.com. It can happen. It will happen, and together we will make it happen. I'm Nathan Pettyjohn. I am the uh, founder and CEO of Isle 411 in St. Louis, and also the uh, founder and president of the VRAR Association. And in my mind, what entrepreneurship means to me is being a creative problem solver um, and building business models around solving those problems for a lot of people. So Nathan, I have successfully avoided being sucked away into virtual reality per Cheryl's instructions, and I'm so glad that you could join us for our podcast. Can you um, get us started telling us a little bit about yourself, IL411, and like what this whole thing is? Because we're going to be throwing VR, AR around a lot, so always remember we're talking virtual reality, augmented reality, we'll throw mixed reality in there, and whatever other terms and acronyms Nathan wants to give us. Think the matrix, everybody. (laughs) I like it. Well, thanks again for having me on this show. I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you. If uh, 
you know, if I explain myself, really, I'm a problem solver, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, a creative problem solver. And I like to think of myself as a happy person in general, but I'm never satisfied. Mm. So if, if I see something wrong, exactly. Mm-hmm. And if you can focus on solving a problem for yourself, it's likely that there are thousands or millions of other people that you're going to help in the process. Yep. Mm-hmm. And if you're helping a lot of people, there's usually a business behind it. So mm-hmm. um, back in 2007, I found myself in a big hardware store. Mm-hmm. We've all been there, frustrated, out of our minds, mm-hmm. looking for one single product. Nobody can tell you where it is. You spend 10 minutes wandering the aisles, angry. Sometimes you leave without even buying. So right? he talks about right. hardware store. I talk about shoe store. That's my life. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's same Either example. way, if you don't find right. what you're looking for, you, you can leave angry, and that's for. not a good thing. Right. Exactly. And mm-hmm. the reality is that frustrates shoppers mm-hmm. like you and me, and it loses millions of dollars for retailers. Mm-hmm. So uh, I had this uh, light bulb moment back in 2007 and said, what if you could take all the inventory data and where everything sits on a shelf in a store and put it in these new things they called iPhones at the time that had just come out onto the mm-hmm. market. And so kind of like Google search where you search for products online, you can go to your phone when you're in your store, mm-hmm. search for a product. Mm-hmm. It shows you right where it is on the shelf. And from a brand marketer's perspective, which is my, my history, um, mm-hmm. that's like gold. Being right. able to know like where you are and what you want within seconds of a buying decision. Mm-hmm. It's like the perfect... Yes, you're, that's what you're trying to trifecta create. ...trifecta coming together. Mm-hmm. So uh, I was a little naive in the beginning thinking, this would be easy to do. I'll just go ask the retailers for their data. They'll give it to me, mm-hmm. put together an app, off we go. Um, since then, we've raised millions of dollars in investment capital. Mm-hmm. But we have finally, we've established ourselves as a global leader for indoor mapping uh, for retailers. We're in about 14,000 stores now. Mm. Wow. You can go in... So you can find your shoes. I it's not just about shoes. nuts and bolts. That's right. <laughs> but I, I'm really interested in hearing from the uh, from the retailers because a lot of times they want you to walk around the store because that's how you create more. You mean impulse shopping? Yeah, <laughs> that little thing there. <laughs> <laughs> also a strategy. So, right. <laughs> so the two of you nailed a very interesting subject. So the retailers, they live and die by impulse purchases, mm-hmm. things you didn't think about. Right. Um, but they also... Uh, live and die by loyalty, and if they could, if they mm, tick you yeah, off, yeah, tick me off, and I'm you're frustrated. Back. In mm-hmm. today's age, with Amazon, you're like, you know what? I'm going to go to the right. path of least resistance to buy. Yep. So we we had this, you know, we were scared when we went in uh, mm-hmm. to the business, thinking retailers may not want to help people. Mm-hmm. So what we found is they said we want both. We want mm-hmm. people to be happy and find what they want, but we also want them to impulse purchase. So the beauty of the digital age is we can actually help you find those shoes and when you're walking up to them we can say hey don't forget to check out these other two Ah. and and, and it's done with science so Mm -hmm. we know kind of your profile the analytics what might appeal Mm -hmm. and not just praying and hoping you happen to see that glittery thing over in the corner Mm -hmm. of your eye so we're, we're really trying to do both of those things and and that's where i think you know retailers are saying yeah this makes sense Mm -hmm. and how we got into augmented reality Mm -hmm. um, yeah uh, about two years ago, uh, the, the good team at Google approached us, and they had this new technology called Tango. Okay. And basically, they just launched the phones last month, but they're new c- phones that have two cameras on the front of them. And these these phones, they call it computer vision. Okay. They, they essentially can scan a room and build a 3D map of it. Mm-hmm. Then the phone knows where it is. By depth sensing and mm-hmm. looking at all of the imagery in the room. Okay. So the phone knows where it is within five centimeters of accuracy. Mm. With that, we they asked us to overlay all of this product location data, like where everything sits on a shelf in sure. a retail, so that I can search for vitamins in a Walgreens store, and I will see an augmented reality a path laid out on the floor in front of me, mm. and then an arrow pointing literally to the product on the shelf. Like a little dangler saying, here it is. So it's almost like Pokemon, but uh, not finding Pokemon, you're finding your... Purchase. Your purchase, your you're product, right. right? And it could be you're finding Pokemon cards <laughs> in the store, too. <laughs> so, and it, it actually works. It That's blew cool. our minds. We said, oh mm-hmm. my gosh, we could actually... This is a whole new world we're going to start experiencing. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then that led to me saying how do I find out more information about augmented reality? And these customers started saying, well, can you do virtual reality, which is a whole nother ball game. Mm -hmm. I went to 
the team at Google, some people I knew at Samsung, and I said, how do I get tapped into like a, a global network, a community where I can learn? They said, there's a lot of conferences out there, but nobody's put together like a global trade association. Mm. So I said, okay, well, it would solve my problem and probably thousands of others. I'm going to start it, and I need your help. Awesome. Wow. And this was in what year? Uh, this was uh, this was last year. Wow. So we literally started uh, the VRAR Association in January of 2016. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cortex here in St. Louis was the first official member of the whole thing. Awesome. Uh, last December, like a month ago, we just passed over 100 global members. And wow. we have 18 chapters around the world that are led by a global, by a chapter president who holds like networking events on a quarterly basis and helps connect everybody locally, but then also connects people virtually. You know, Virtually, <laughs> augmentedly, <laughs> mixed <laughs> reality. Yes, yes, yes. That's yeah. very cool. That is very so, cool. So, and it all works together. So, it's been great. Is the community very attuned to what we would call, you know, um, crowdsourcing or open source type of behavior in this space, or is it? Uh, still very proprietary i mean bringing together great minds is wonderful how mm-hmm. much those great minds will share with each other is also yeah that's debatable. a good question so i found that you know in the early stages of any technology life cycle you have people who are extremely passionate mm-hmm. and they are willing to share anything and everything almost too much okay uh, mm-hmm. but it's good because the people in the vr community and the ar community they are some of the friendliest people with each other you'll ever meet. I mean, mm-hmm. it's it's amazing. They'll tell stories about what they developed, how mm-hmm. it's working. Let me share some code with you so that right. you can build on top of it. And I think, you know, we're going to see that for the next year or two. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, people are going to start making millions and hundreds of millions of dollars. And people are going to get a little bit more, like, proprietary minded right. about mm-hmm. things. So right. mm-hmm. we're still in that early stage, um, the honeymoon stage, if you will, mm-hmm. of VR and AR. Yep. And um, when you look at a market that's going from roughly one to two billion dollar industry last year to in 2020, just a few years away, mm-hmm. uh, their esti- analysts all over the world are estimating this is a 120 billion dollar plus market by 2020. Wow! It's- and what's interesting is it crosses so many different industries. Um, you're yeah. talking about this game, just gaming um, industries, but retail, um, healthcare. Uh, all types of industries, folks are looking at augmented or virtual uh, type of reality products that yeah. can be used. So talk to us about the mixed reality. What What is that? Okay. So w- let me first explain VR, Please. AR, like quick examples and then okay. where MR sits. So virtual okay. reality is um, putting on like a headset mm-hmm. and taking yourself to a virtual world. Mm-hmm. The real world in front of you is gone and you've gone someplace else. Mm-hmm. Uh, augmented reality is overlaying some digital content and information on top of the real world. Mm-hmm. So a lot of us have seen like you point your phone at a QR code and up pops like a yep. scary monster and growls. Pokemon. Right? A Pokemon. We all know that. Right. <laughs> um, and then mixed reality is then starting to take in um, being able to interact with that entire room and environment. So it's, it's, it's like augmented reality, but then being able to walk through a space. And as you walk through a space, something new happens over in the corner. Mm. Um, and it's, it's adding in these other sensors and components so that you think uh, – Reality is mixed with augmented. Mm-hmm. It's hard and to blur. It, it is. The line, it's, so it's hard to see. And it is actually a heavily debated topic. If you if you had a panel of twenty people, you would probably get twenty different answers exactly. on what mixed reality is. Okay. So uh, again, another uh, opportunity that's emerged is for someone to go out and set like industry standards mm. of terminology and what mm-hmm. is what. Um, so. The uh, the VR Air Association started uh, just two months ago. We announced we're forming committees across all these different verticals. Mm-hmm. So, like entertainment, uh, retail, and commerce is mm-hmm. one. Medical uh, mm-hmm. is another. Um, we also have some really um, uh, knowledgeable like law firms that are members of the association that want to get involved and start helping to set some like some law precedents. Mm-hmm. This is an uncharted territory. Yeah. It is. Mm-hmm. And so that is kind of the next phase over the next like two quarters that mm-hmm. we're like establishing these committees and trying to set up industry standards. Mm-hmm. So you don't get 20 definitions for mixed reality. Right. And there's really one. Right. <laughs> and I know most people are familiar probably with virtual realities. Um, 
type of products. You know, you you have now a for Hey, wasn't Star Trek doing it long, long time yes. ago, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> And then if you see the over Christmas, Samsung has, you know, now the new uh, virtual reality. Um, yeah, lots of different makers uh, over, are coming out with, right. the, with the headset Right, using device. their phone and using the headset. But Oculus, which was a young guy who uh, d- developed Oculus. Like uh, 17 in his bedroom at home, I think. <laughs> exactly. I think and, it was his garage. Okay. It was in his well, garage. You know, it's always exactly. the ubiquitous garage. <laughs> I think the bedroom's more comfortable, but that's just me. <laughs> and in healthcare, there are uh, virtual reality technologies. They're so cumbersome. They're so huge. You know, you fit over your head. Um, and a lot of times, you know, people were complaining of nausea, you know, because it was so encompassing. With it's a still lot a of pretty big device. If yeah. You're going to do a... But they're they're thing. looking at taking these these technologies down, and like you, if you see the um, Samsung technology, it's not this Oculus type of technology <laughs> any longer. So technology is moving forward, yeah. uh, pretty rapidly. And like you said, uh, uh, keeping up with the legal ramifications, um, and especially if you're in healthcare, you know, FDA type of issues, if there are any at all. Yep. Um, uh, HIPAA. Yeah. God oh my gosh! Sarah. Yes, yes. So, what are some of the the I guess some of the the hurdles uh, forming this association that <clears throat> you guys had to overcome as you brought together different entities? And um, yeah, I think first out of the gate was establishing credibility um, and finding people who are passionate enough to get involved in this industry. Actually, that wasn't a problem, but. There are very few people who can call themselves experts in VR and AR because mm-hmm. it's so new. Mm-hmm. And um, there are a lot of people trying to do a lot of things. So it was, it was getting a couple of the big names involved um, that said, hey, we're going to be a part of this. And So who uh, are those names? Like you talked about Google. Yeah. He so tells us, do you, do you our, like, no. our first event um, was – so Samsung agreed to host it at their offices in Silicon Valley. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we had a speaker panel that included Samsung – uh, GoPro mm-hmm. and Google and a very famous tech author, his name's Shell Israel, mm-hmm. who's written many books on technology and, mm-hmm. and the new waves that are coming. So they were on a panel and basically said like, hey, we're, we're a part of this thing. We need it all to come together. And once that happened, um, you know, we then launched a New York City chapter. Mm-hmm. Uh, in this is wa- all last year, right? Yeah. That's, and that's so amazing. NYU this is what got happens involved. when you're at the top, you know, you're, you're a rising wave. Yes. Yeah. You're on the rising wave. Well, you've proved it through the aisle for your your first company, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, this shows about entrepreneurial, mm-hmm. you know, spirit and everything yes. that comes with it. So it's like, basically, you have to say with conviction, I'm solving this problem and I won't stop until it's mm-hmm. solved. And even then I'm not stopping. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and you have to do it and execute because there's right. a lot of people out there with ideas and entrepreneurships. More than ideas, it's about executing. Right. Say that again. Yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> execution, Filling execution, the need execution. And, right. Filling the need and executing. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, but, to that yeah. end, we had talked a little bit about the technical founder versus the non-technical founder. And I... You know, at Square One, in our Square One program, we encounter a lot of non-technical founders, meaning the person who says, wouldn't it be great if I could walk through this room and have this pop up or that pop mm-hmm. up or this type of prompt to go buy those the next pair of shoes? So how far can I get if I'm the idea person, mm-hmm. so to speak? Um, how quickly do I need to team up with a technical founder? And I guess the association would be a great way to connect with somebody like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we have a mix of, of, of all types involved in that. I mean, uh, Walgreens is a member, for example, Lowe's home improvement is, mm. uh, so we've got people who are actually trying to build companies and then customers, mm-hmm. but kind of back more to your question. I think uh, a non-technical founder, which is actually what I am, uh, can be very successful. You came from the branding side yeah. of things, mm-hmm. right? Not the it side. Exactly. Of things. Mm-hmm. Um, but you just have to be really good at, um, selling your vision and getting a team of people to believe in that vision and follow. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but I think right now the way a lot of companies are starting is they're outsourcing a lot of the technical development work. Mm -hmm. And that is a good, in my opinion, it's a good smart way to get started in a Mm -hmm. lot of cases Mm because you can quickly test and say, Hey, is this going to work? You can build a prototype for Mm -hmm. very little money. Mm -hmm. Um, And then it helps sell the vision and then you can even recruit a technical Mm co-founder. So it can be done both ways, and I think it really it takes both. Um, you know, with IL four one one, I started this with Matthew Kulig, a co founder. He's actually non technical either, but he had set up other companies and got them moving. Mm-hmm. 
And then we got two technical people to help found the company. Mm -hmm. So it was like, you know, the band of four. Mm -hmm. And together, we were just unstoppable. I mean, it was just like, we're going to keep iterating and building until Mm -hmm. we get it. And so that's, you know, it can be started many ways, but Mm -hmm. it can be done. Can you talk a little bit about enlisting people in the vision? Uh, Because, again, I've talked with entrepreneurs all the time, and they're like, well, where do I find this person? And then what Mm -hmm. am I going to do? Like, do I have to give them part of the company? Are they going to do it because they love the idea? Mm -hmm. How am I going to know? How how am I going to pay them? I don't have any money yet. But you were able to put together the band of four. Yeah. Um, And just how, how have you been successful in communicating your vision in a way that enlists people to get involved sure so what i what i've learned is when i first had an idea for aisle 411 i was scared to tell anybody about the idea i thought everybody was going to steal it i mm-hmm. mean literally i was like looking around my i've heard shoulder. that before too right, right right and uh the reality is i figured out is you know i could tell five thousand people this idea and maybe one Mm-hmm. would would get it off the ground enough to as something mm-hmm. and the chances that they can actually execute and make it a successful business are like very very small it's not their vision right it's your vision right, <laughs> and, right. So, and if it were easy lots of people would be doing it exactly like, with this yeah. many people on the planet folks somebody else has thought of your idea <laughs> exactly yeah. they haven't executed it <laughs> exactly and they had they don't have the in the time the talent or the the inspiration to execute you got so it. that's it we need to go to break um, and then we'll come back and finish that thought? Absolutely. Great. Absolutely. Meet the ambassadors. When I interact with somebody, I can think of it beyond just like, oh, this person is exhausting me or this person is making me uncomfortable or what is going on with this person to having more compassion as I'm interacting with them. And I think that it's so important that as long as you're interacting with people, this information is going to be very valuable. If you're interested in being a part of Alive and Well STL and helping continue the conversation please take five log on to alive and well stl.com i'm jeff smith i'm from st louis missouri and to me entrepreneurial thinking means figuring out ways to do more with less sometimes even nothing so nathan you've hit on two of the key messages that we try to really instill in entrepreneurs one it's all about the execution and two don't be afraid to talk about your idea Mm -hmm. so you you got over talking about your idea (laughs) yeah what did that open up for you well it helps you to iterate and figure out you know what part of your idea is stupid and (laughs) (laughs) i mean quite honestly like most people parts of your ideas are ridiculous Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. uh and and it's up to you as an entrepreneur then to filter that and say okay uh if i if I'm not getting a little bit of like, that's crazy, then mm-hmm. your idea is probably not really that audacious and big exactly. enough. But you got to filter it out and say, okay, you know, maybe they're right about this other piece. Right. That was a bad idea. Mm-hmm. And and then you start getting introductions and people, people by nature want to help other people. They I really found. do. And, and they'll say, here in the region. Yeah, yeah, I, I want to introduce you to this guy or this guy. And then mm-hmm. all of a sudden you'll find your technical co-founder, mm-hmm. um, you know, and it's about, you know, getting out into the community into the real world. Mm-hmm. Um, and <laughs> Talking people. to other people. <laughs> right. Often. Not augmented right. or virtual. Real world. Right. Having those conversations. Venture Cafe is one good place here in St. And Louis. And finding right. those mentors and those partners. I think that's really important for young entrepreneurs because just like you said, your idea might be great, but having somebody else evaluate that to tell you, yeah, that's doable or you are cuckoo crazy. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but that's and, okay. And, and talking to people who are are not your friends right. is a really good idea because your friends are going to be nice usually. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that's yeah. great. Exactly. And, and especially after a beer. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you, you want people that aren't afraid to tell you that is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it will make you angry. I mean, I had people in the beginning that thought, uh, I'll form one that's ridiculous. It'll never happen. Right. Nobody will ever give you data. Mm-hmm. Um, Here nobody are all the problems. Right? There, he's are all the reasons it won't work. And I had, I had people that said, no, we're not going to invest in you. Mm-hmm. And you want to get really angry and say, "How can you not see this?" Um, Talk but, to us about that because I think a lot yeah. of a lot of entrepreneurs get so frustrated when you start talking about raising money, and especially for the first time, if you haven't done it. Um, talk to us about your experience, especially with this new company, new technology. What was that like? Yeah, so really, it's about hitting milestones and showing progress, mm-hmm. and then raising money becomes a lot easier. But um, did you get pushback from folks who said you're not the you're not the technical person? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I got every kind of no you can imagine. Uh, we have 
quite a few investors in our company, and for every investor, we probably had 10 that said no, uh, mm-hmm. seriously. And so we also had um, we had a group here in town that um, a, an angel group mm-hmm. that ended up passing on our investment the first time, just completely. Mm-hmm. No, thanks, we're not interested. Mm-hmm. We made some progress. We went back. Uh, we went through like two two levels of presenting. Then they came back and wanted to invest at a valuation of our company that we couldn't agree to because mm-hmm. it was less than what we had already mm-hmm. sold shares recently. Um, and so we very nicely said, I appreciate it, but no. And then four months later, they ended up investing and we met where we wanted to. Mm-hmm. And since that group has put over a million dollars in funding into our company. Mm-hmm. And in the early days, as you wanted to say, I'm never going to talk to you again. See you <laughs> right. later. Right. But you, you don't can't burn it. bridges right. anywhere. Right. Because you right. never know where it's going to come around. But I think, too, you talked about you went back, you guys improved the product, you kept iterating the product. I, I think what's interesting is a lot of people invest in the team and the technology. And what we often tell folks is nobody's going to pay you to do your prototype, mm-hmm. right? And and folks are always like, well, I can't, if I don't have the prototype, <clears throat> then I can't prove to you it works, so why won't you fund, and the prototype's expensive, which in this case... Cost may not be as as big of a hurdle as it is for some of our other entrepreneurs, mm-hmm. but um, you know they're not going to pay you to do your prototype, and you do have to have momentum and cash is king. You know these are things you're hearing from us over and over and over again because that's actually what the market's looking for. Has yeah. that been your experience as well? <clears throat> yeah, I would say though, five six years ago the market was a little different, and mm. and you could raise money with a PowerPoint presentation and an idea and three advisors that looked pretty on paper. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, today, it, it's getting a lot a lot easier to build prototypes, a lot less expensive, but mm-hmm. because of that, everybody has a prototype. Mm-hmm. Okay. And if you don't have one, then you're not, you're gonna not likely going to get funded. And I think, too, so, yeah. also looking at customer uh, using your technology, yeah. that also plays uh, significantly, I think, into a lot of investment decisions. You know, um, we've talked to investors that said, I want to see your customer uptake. Yep. Uh, has that been something that you guys have been faced with and organizations that you're dealing with uh, have been faced with? Yeah. I think uh, every investor wants to see some metric of growth. Mm-hmm. And most most investors today are savvy enough to say that they can see through a BS growth metric mm-hmm. like – my downloads of my app is growing, you know, by 200% every month. Right, because okay, you're well, downloading it. Yeah. <laughs> and and if say, 200% is at uh, three and, people. Right. You can pay for downloads. Right. And no one ever uses it again. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so that's like a metric that is not real anymore. Mm-hmm. Right. So back to your question, customers and paying customers are paying critical. Paying customers, right. Um, you know, revenue is, is critical. I would say, you know, Profitability, not necessarily just because if you're taking those right. funds, reinvesting mm-hmm. in the company, that can be looked at as a, as a very good thing if mm-hmm. you're continuing to grow. Mm-hmm. So, but but revenue, I think, is getting much much more important, mm-hmm. especially in um, parts of the world that are not like Silicon Valley, New York City, um, or Boston, which are some of the the big high tech, mm-hmm. fast growth companies where people are willing to overlook that. Mm-hmm. There's also, um, I think, a gap in in most areas of the world in terms of like going from uh, angel and seed funding to Series A uh, funding mm-hmm. with, from a venture capitalist, and then even bigger, uh, which we do have a problem, you know, I think oh, in yeah. St. Louis, for example, is going from A round of funding to B, B round. round. Yep. Mm-hmm. And so every investor that you want, like on your board who's investing, you want them to be able to take you to the next level. Mm-hmm. And that's real, you know, the number starts shrinking as yes. you go up the, the, the pyramid there. Yep. And, and sometimes you have to move out of the market to, yeah. in order to get to those next rounds of funding. Yeah. Um, one thing that's interesting I'd like to ask, because you, you, might, you might have some folks out here listening today that says, you know what, I might have an interesting technology that fits into this, you know, uh, VR, AR uh, world. If they look for your association, what can your association provide for those folks who are maybe just in the very initial stages of looking at a technology development, um, something like that? What what can you guys help them with? So there's three uh, mantras that we live by, uh, growth, connections, and knowledge. Mm -hmm. So those three things we can help provide. 
uh, more specifically, you know, events like we, we host events all around the world. <clears throat> Our 18 chapters host like quarterly events. Mm-hmm. So it provides a place that uh, they can come. You don't have to be an official member of the association mm. to come to these events. Mm. But if you are a member, you get into these events for free uh, as one of the benefits. Mm. And then uh, a lot of knowledge sharing. So getting involved in these committees um, with other p- companies. Uh, getting access to some like industry reports at discounted rates that the association has negotiated, getting discounted uh, tickets and exhibit space into like major conferences mm-hmm. is another benefit that we provide. Um, we also just launched this uh, this thing we call the directory, and it has I think right now over sixteen hundred companies globally that uh, you can like search by search tags. Say I'm looking for a company that does three sixty audio. And mm. it'll pull up, you know, five companies uh, throughout the world that do that with, you know, quick access to their information. Phenomenal. So there's all kinds of ways that we can we can start to help. Uh, you can kind of ease into it and get involved. And so, what are the benefits for me as a member? Yeah. So the this directory, um, we've we put a lot of investment into that, and so like members are the ones who get access to this directory. Mm. Uh, so that's a, an added benefit. Um, the members are the ones who get like actually all the discounts to the conferences and booth yep. space. Mm-hmm. Um, we had some members that went up to New York City at the NASDAQ Virtual Reality mm. Expo. Ooh. Uh, and they saved like $4,000 on their booth space, which wow. is huge. huge. So <laughs> That's real money. That is. Right. <laughs> That's not virtual or Bitcoin. <laughs> and, then, uh, and we actually have a podcast, oh. too. It's called Everything uh, VR and AR. Uh, yes. Uh, so a guy named Kevin Harvell here in St. Louis hosts it. Another homegrown entrepreneur. That's right. Uh, so, w- mm. and we have uh, we have like a, an email newsletter that goes out to. I mean, we're closing in on close to ten thousand people that have subscribed to this newsletter. Cool. Um, we have like a video news channel, and so if we don't like uh, only feature members in these. You know, at these events and the, the newsletter. But we try to cater and make sure that we're helping give members more exposure than they would otherwise get. So do you have pricing for membership, tiered pricing? So if I'm a, you know, early stage entrepreneur where I can't even cover my software development, (laughs) um, I can become uh, a member of your organization versus, uh, you know, a Google or or someone else. Yeah, we do. So Mm -hmm. like there's uh, individual memberships. There's uh, startups that are Mm pre-funded. Ah. We just added that because uh, there's, yes. a, there's a difference between somebody who's raised five million bucks and somebody yep. who's not. You know, not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and and we're really just trying we're really trying to fund and support the organization. So right. we want to make it fair for everybody. And you're in you're in an and, emerging market. Yeah. Yes. I mean, so you're going to have people who really are just starting out. Yes. So. That's that's. And then very there's cool. uh, there's an academic and institution level. So mm-hmm. like NYU is a member, mm-hmm. um, and they take different needs, et cetera. And then there's like a corporate membership, which includes. Mm-hmm. So so USA Today is a member. A mm-hmm. uh, and E Networks is a member. You know, Samsung is a member. So they they take a lot more energy and effort to help support the people there. And so that's there's tiered memberships. Um, and, and we can, you know, if anybody's interested, you go to thevrara.com mm-hmm. and uh, you can request information and we'll send you all the information mm-hmm. about the different subscriptions and cool. everything. So. And is- it would also be a place, I think, that, you know, again, we always talk about, uh, you know, there's the entrepreneur. Uh, there's also the person who wants to be entrepreneurial where they are. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, as I'm hearing these these big names, these well-established brands, these large companies, too, if you're in a company where you think this could be an applicable technology, where you think you can innovate within your space, this would be the type of association to get involved with because it would help you be entrepreneurial in that work that you're doing today. Yeah, that's a really good point. Awesome. And I, and I cool. love the fact that you guys are connectors. You're, you're connecting folks to other folks to look to learn more about this whole area since it is a new area and i wanted to touch on that so the knowledge piece is really important and one of the things we talked about earlier was how this is uncharted territory Mm -hmm. you know there's going to be legal precedent there's probably going to be new revenue streams that develop Mm -hmm. out of this um but there's also you know naysayers right with every great new idea there's Mm -hmm. the you know um what does my computer know about me that I don't even know about myself? Um, uh, you know, who's the, watching? The screen or time, who's listening? right? Screen time becomes a whole new conversation, mm-hmm. right? I mean, you know, if I'm wearing a headset, the, mm-hmm. I probably have less human contact than than just looking at my iPhone all day. Mm-hmm. Um, 
what are some of the, the themes coming out from that perspective of the technology might be ahead of where we are? And how's the community, what's the community talking about with mm-hmm. regard? Okay, so I'm going to go down a little bit of a path that is uh, maybe uncomfortable for some people. But okay. So, go there. We're outside though. our comfort zone. Put, so, your, put your safety belts on, everybody. That's right. Hang on tight. <laughs> We're going we go. into... <laughs> <laughs> so we've all heard, I think, of Elon Musk, the billionaire. Yes. Mm-hmm. So he had a statement like a year or two ago that said, he's like, I believe we all may be living in a simulation. Ah. I've heard not, Like very much like a matrix? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. okay. Yeah. So... This and is on the Big Bang Theory. When too, you guys. when you dive into this and start thinking deeply, right? Um, He's serious. And, and and you want to go on this trip of thinking really far out, right? It does get interesting. So you think about like where we are headed with artificial intelligence mm-hmm. and machine mm-hmm. learning. What can be com- computed, mm-hmm. like by a machine now, is more than almost the, the whole of all people on Earth now. Right. If we were all thinking about the same One thing at the same can time, do it faster than still everyone. couldn't do it that right. fast. Um, and then you think about like the ability of all these sensors, like we put it on our heads mm-hmm. and, and, and people literally fall off their feet. They think they're in another world. Mm-hmm. They're gone from right. reality. Um, you also got companies that are building like haptic feedback clothing that you mm-hmm. put on your body and like you feel like you're being touched on your arm mm-hmm. uh, when you see it in virtual reality. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and then you go even further and you say, okay, so really those are just nerve endings. If I could get technology to trick my brain also to, to think, you know, do I need my arms and legs? Mm-hmm. Uh, like, could I just go to Mars with a snap of my fingers mm-hmm. and I would feel and think I was there? Mm-hmm. So there's, it's a very interesting debate. But when you start really digging into it, you're like, oh, my gosh, what? Mm-hmm. Where are we? <laughs> <laughs> no, no kidding. Are we? Well, right. That's what I brought up. I mean, it, it and, was an episode of <laughs> Big Bang Theory where they yeah. were talking about, I think it was Sheldon, that said, of course. of course, that we're all video characters in some, you know, extraterrestrial <laughs> <laughs> world. Uh, right. You know? Well, and that brings in a whole yeah. different conversation around <laughs> business ethics and, yes. and, and you know, should what and should security. we be? Yeah. Security yes. and privacy. And I mean, things we're not going to really go into any depth on Mm -hmm. um, in this conversation. But, you know, being an innovator means that you're really are not only innovating around your technology, but Mm -hmm. you're cracking open the way the world works Mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. And this Mm -hmm. is really cracking open the way the world works. Yes. Um, Because it's really cool and amazing. And then it's also like bends your mind a it bit, does. both yeah. when you're in it but also just thinking about it right and but what it has the power i think to what do. you said though christy is really interesting in the beginning of our segment we talked about star trek oh, star trek would was be so proud that i referenced of it. its game yeah. you know and all the things that we're talking about now when we look at the flip phone that was back in star trek you know um moving right. people from one place to another you know that was and, I'm all for teleportation. Oh my gosh! I mean, make my life you know, a lot easier. <laughs> so I, I think that somebody had to think of that in order to write it into scripts, and I think governments too are looking at when you look at you know technology, how you can create, and if you look at Bitcoin, if you look at um, other. Um, uh, ways that governments might be involved in, you know, new w- areas of warfare. No longer are you going to put people on the ground to fight wars. Maybe there's a way through virtual reality, augmented reality. I don't know, but yeah. it is mind bending. It, it is, is mind bending. It's it's opening up a whole new world. You yeah. know, so. But you look at the laws of physics. There's always a give and a take. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, and so when you. When you take more uh, benefits and life gets easier for you, you're you're giving up something. You have right. to, mm-hmm. and you're giving up a little bit of privacy, a little bit of security. Absolutely. And we all just have to kind of draw that line in the sand and say, when do I say it's too much for me? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I think most of us, uh, you know, looking at the technology we use today, we're we're okay with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just how far, easier. how far does it go when you when you talk about wearable technology and when you talk about changing people's worlds and, and minds and, and what things are going, how you can do that. Yeah. It really is. A, you can go as far as you want to go. Do you do you remember Google Glass? Yes. yes. The glass heads that mm-hmm. people talked about. So And people like freaked out about privacy. Right. Uh, the interesting thing is like you walk around and you look at people with their phones and mm-hmm. they're taking thousands of phones. They're taking video everywhere. Mm-hmm. And 
um, it was it wasn't really about like taking pictures. It was like this lens, and it's like mm-hmm. I don't know if you're look, taking pictures or not of me. Mm-hmm. So, I've I've heard from a few different reliable sources that um, that some of the big companies, even Apple, which is very secretive, mm-hmm. uh, that that they're working on new AR glasses. It would make sense. Mm-hmm. In five years, the majority of us will be wearing mm-hmm. them, and mm-hmm. there'll be a lens in front of us, but. As a society, it's got to happen in a few baby steps. Mm -hmm. Like the technology exists today. Yes. But A, we're not comfortable with, you know, people looking really with these weird, crazy glasses. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We got to get them to be a little more stylish. There are fashion concerns at the very least. (laughs) Um, And and just society in general, like, you know, the younger age demographic who is accustomed to like always taking Mm -hmm. pictures, always, 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 always on. On your phone. They will they will grow up and and be like yeah of course we have mm-hmm. glasses with cameras on them why mm-hmm. wouldn't you right right um, freeze up your hands to do other things at the very you, least <laughs> have you seen the Snapchat spectacles these are things it's I'm brilliant I'm sure my child has and they they're these cool looking sunglasses from Snapchat and they have little cameras on them and you can tap a button and it I've records I've heard about that yes and they are taken off and and this you know the younger demographic mm-hmm. that's getting into that they're being slowly just saying. That's cool. Yep. I'm fine with it. So, so. I think my takeaways, because um, not amazing. surprisingly, we could talk for another of, five of hours, but we are at the end of our time. Mm-hmm. Um, but for me, the takeaways is regardless what industry you're in, mm-hmm. this is a trend you need to be paying attention to. Um, this is where innovation is happening. Mm-hmm. When, when you look back in a few years, this would be the thing you missed if mm-hmm. you weren't paying attention. So um, I really encourage our listeners to learn more about this, not only how it affects their own world, but how it has the potential to change their industry. Mm-hmm. Because we also know that as our industry change, so do our employment opportunities. Mm-hmm. So we're always trying to help you think ahead. You know, mm-hmm. what what is going to change in my world that might result in a new opportunity for me, mm-hmm. either as an entrepreneur, as a subject matter expert as a mentor as an employee and um, this is this is a place to be paying attention and the great news is is that nathan created the vr ar yes. association it's right here in st louis mm-hmm. there's a local chapter and the local chapter is looking for a president so that they can be even more robust so can yeah. you tell us again nathan where we find out more information and stay connected mm-hmm. yeah if you go to the vr com. Um, you can find all the information there. So we have, uh, you know, we're on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter as well. But go there. Uh, you can request information on becoming a chapter president. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so it, it would be nice to have a, a fully dedicated St. Louis chapter president. Mm-hmm. Um, my role as the president of the global organization takes some effort, uh, but we need somebody who's like just dedicated, passionate. Mm-hmm. It's not a full time role. Um, maybe four or five hours a week. Mm-hmm. Right. But uh, it really helps um, put you into the, the mix, gives you a thought leadership mm-hmm. position. So anyone who's interested, uh, reach out to me. You can also email me. Um, so uh, What's your Nath- email? Nathan at the VRARA.com. Perfect. For that purpose, yeah. Wonderful. Perfect. Thank you so much for spending time with us. Yes. Um, I have a feeling that as things rapidly progress, there'll be more conversations to be had. And, and we'll uh, let you guys figure out, are we in virtual? Are we in mixed? <laughs> are we... <laughs> Which reality do we exist in? Oh, that is the question. <laughs> Thank you, Nathan. Thank you. Thanks. Changing the way you view new ventures. Igniting your thinking about entrepreneurship. It's entrepreneurially thinking. Get connected and discover more. Visit our website for show notes, resources, information about our guests, upcoming events, and of course, all your favorite episodes. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them for us in the comment sections. And be sure to leave us a five-star rating on iTunes. The best way to show love is to share. Let everybody know that you're thinking entrepreneurially. So visit our website, entrepreneuriallythinking.com. Hashtag EthinkSTL. Entrepreneurially thinking is another positive production of Rare Gem Productions. Thanks for listening.